everybody, this is Christian Buckley with another MVP Buzz Chat interview, and I'm talking today with the Noob. Hello. Hi, Christian. Nice to meet you. Well, it's great to uh, to, to talk to you. I think we've actually, I, we may have met, or I, I don't know, in an online world, I don't know, remember like who I've met in person, or I've just had conversations with online. But for folks that don't know who you are, why don't you give us that background, who you are, where you are, what you do. All right. Yeah, so firstly, my name is Anup, Anup Tati. Uh, I am basically from India, but I uh, have been living in, in London for about uh, 10 years now. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, and I work at a company called uh, Content Plus Cloud. Uh, so if you've heard of Chris O'Brien, mm -hmm. uh, he works here. Yep. Uh, and uh, uh, I've been uh, doing uh, 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 you know SharePoint development since about, uh, I would say, nine or 10 years now. Okay. Uh, and yeah, have been in the uh, development space since I started working with SharePoint. Well, see, that's probably it then because the, you know, the SharePoint community is a, you know, smaller, tighter community and, you know, interaction and content, and other things. Of course, we know Chris, you know, from, for many years, but uh, well, that's great. How many, so how many MVPs at your company now? So I'm the fourth one. Uh, so yeah, uh, there are three three other MAPs who are into office apps and services, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, mine is in office development. Yeah, that's uh, it's always interesting. While we could all be focused on one thing, like SharePoint, there could be multi there are people that are SharePoint people that are business applications MVPs and office development and uh, and enterprise mobility is another one where people are more over on the DevOps side of things, but. Um, but yeah, or, or there's even a couple of people that have our, their, their Azure MVPs, but are, you know, just have kind of work that side of, of the stack. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So a lot of, uh, different things to concentrate on now. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's good to see that, uh, uh, you know, uh, there are MVPs in all these different, uh, different domains. Well, I'm always interested to learn like how, like what was your path to becoming an MVP? Like what was your process? What would you say like in your recommendations for people that are interested in moving along that path? Right, for me, it's been mainly the community. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the SharePoint community, it's it's uh, so helpful. The patterns and practices community, mm -hmm. uh, the, you know, we, we get to, at least for me, I get to learn a lot of, new um, uh, new things uh, from that community and uh, i've been uh, learning from the community and contributing back to the community uh, and uh, uh, you know that's that's my path basically so learn more uh, and then share more uh, so that's why uh, as the motto of the community is uh, sharing is caring uh, so uh, yeah um, uh, in fact what happens is with with every new uh, new concepts that uh, that get released by microsoft uh, the uh, there's a lot of information about those new concepts in the community so uh, you are very much up to date uh, with all the uh, new updates that microsoft keep releasing and uh, the community uh, you know they release a lot of videos write a lot of blog posts uh, tweet uh, uh, tweet about all these new concepts so that's where i gather a lot of information and with that information, uh, you know, I process and then try to, um, you know, uh, provide a bit more or uh, more my findings on that. Yeah. And that's uh, that's my path, uh, how it has been uh, towards the MVP. Uh, and also, uh, you know, uh, Chris uh, Chris O'Brien, uh, he has been uh, very helpful. So, uh, you know, I, I had a few conversations with him, um, uh, you know, th throughout this path. So how we can approach and uh, yeah, that, that's always great advice. If if uh, for people that are participating in the community and are interested in learning more about the MVP program, is to go and connect with, talk with an MVP. So if you, I mean, yeah. it's great that you have as as teammates other MVPs. Like uh, you know, at point there are five of us that are MVPs. There are three of us that are regional directors. And so you know, occasionally people will reach out like, what, what, tell me more about the program and, and what else can I go and do? 
Uh, and so it's great to, to be able to have that. If you don't have somebody, a teammate, somebody within your organization that's an MVP is, you know, reach out to some of the MVPs who are, you know, just like your favorite people that you follow on their blogs or, or their videos, or you've met them in person once or twice. Uh, and just reach out. Even if you don't know them, like yeah. MVPs are generally pretty approachable, you know, through social. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, because in, in a lot of these conferences, when you go and speak to MVPs, you know, the, the answer your queries and beat anything, you know, uh, there's nothing like a silly question or anything. So they are very helpful. The, and the silly question is the one never asked, right? Yes, that's right. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And even from Microsoft side, uh, so uh, uh, we've got Claire Smith over here, who's the uh, MVP uh, manager uh, in, from Microsoft. So she has been also very helpful, uh, you know, after the nomination process, uh, you know, she went through all the contributions and told me how I can proceed with the application. So I always forget yeah. about that. So that's a great recommendation. If, if that's something, if you're serious about, you know, finding out more and pursuing that, that path is to, is to get to know the MVP leads. And if you don't know who the, they are, uh, cause over in the U S uh, you know, we have Christian and Betsy that are that cover North America. Uh, right. They're pretty social. They're doing a lot of things just kind of out there. People can find them. But again, that's something, if you don't know in your region of the world, who your, the MVP lead is, you can ask an MVP that. So yes, I, yeah, I'm sure that right. exists out in a website somewhere out publicly. If you could it, just do a search on MVP leads at Microsoft. No, yeah, on the uh, on the MVP.microsoft.com, uh, I think there's a there's a list. Is of, there? Uh, okay. Yes. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't even know that. So right. yeah. well, look, you're you're already providing community value right there today. <laughs> Well, that's really cool. Hey, I was wondering, so for folks that aren't familiar with the patterns and practices like those sessions, maybe you can yeah. talk about that more, uh, how people can get involved. Like, what is what is it? How can people get involved? Yeah, sure. Uh, to start with, uh, there's a website called pnp.github.io, uh, and uh, that website has a lot of information. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the community itself, uh, there are a lot of... Uh, weekly, uh, uh, you know, uh, weekly community calls. So in that, uh, uh, so to give an example, uh, there's a SharePoint uh, community call, uh, which happens uh, every every other Tuesday, I think, yeah. Uh, and then, uh, or every other Thursday, I might know, yeah. But, uh, uh, the, the, you know, the initial call will be, um, uh, you know, they give you updates on the latest happenings at Microsoft and then, um, uh, uh, any community member can do a demo for 10 minutes. So there'll be three demos in, in each call. Uh, and the community members like Vesa, Waldeck, David Warner, Hugo, they're all uh, very helpful. And on the website itself, we can go and register to these. Uh, they have you know, lots of different sessions on how to get started. If you want to present, uh, you know, what are the initial steps that you can do uh, to do a demo, uh, how to increase your confidence, et cetera. So, they have a lot of information covered on that website. And uh, yeah, that, that community itself uh, uh, is very helpful. Uh, for, like I said, in the beginning of the call, I have learned a lot from the community earlier. Now I was very scared to do a demo on a, on a community call, but uh, you know, with, with the help of the, uh, uh, you know, these community meetings, you know, um, we can do a demo and everyone is uh, very supportive and uh, they, uh, you know, uh, they answer questions, ask questions and uh, get information from you. So, yeah, it's, it's well, that's one thing. And so I know like Waldeck is former MVP for many years. You have a lot of people at Microsoft that were MVPs and Microsoft like snatched them up out of the community. <laughs> um, but they understand, you know, what for folks that are, you know, tentative about, I, I don't know that I'm ready to go and share and, you know, they can help you through that process and, uh, and give you advice on that, give you feedback before you go and present something live. But that is a great springboard into, you know, the path to becoming an MVP or just doing public speaking on, on the subject matter in the first place. Uh, it, great experience. Even if you have no desire to be an MVP or to ever present at a conference, just making those contacts and, yes. the, you know, having that those contacts to help you in your work for your company can be hugely beneficial. 
Yes, yeah, uh, definitely, yeah. Because the amount of information that you get uh, from the community, uh, say in your day-to-day -day work when you face some problems, uh, you, you can ask a community member and then uh, you'll get a solution uh, straight away. Or even if you have attended one of these calls, the solution might be there. The, all, all the calls are recorded and shared on YouTube as well. So you can uh, you know, watch the calls at any time. There are several blog posts on the calls as well. Yeah, it's a, it's a very helpful community. Uh, there, there are very, uh, you know, uh, I think the youngest member in the community is about 14 years old. So she's also doing some uh, demos and uh, participating in various calls. So yeah, it's it's really good to see. Yeah, that's it, that is cool to see. And there's a uh, I don't know that Microsoft handy has any age limits on becoming an MVP. I think the youngest that I'm aware of there was uh, there was an 18 year old. Oh wow! I'm trying to remember if um, so. I've got a good friend of mine, um, Paul Colmes, who became an MVP, and then his daughter Ashley became an MVP. I don't know if she was the youngest. I think there was another, there was a, a, a I'll say kid, because he was young, like, a, I think he was 18. And he was right. in like Singapore or Malaysia or something and became an MVP. It's a few years nice. back. I don't know what happened to him. I'm okay. confident he got older. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but I, anyway, so I mean, there have been, you know, uh, but uh, Ashley, I don't know if she was 18 or 19 when she <laughs> just like a year ago when she became an MVP, but but again, it's it's all about the work and the contributions to the community. So yeah. it's a great way to to start out your career, certainly by getting involved with the community, giving back, and then uh, you know trying to earn that. I always say that that even if you don't get the recognition you're you're by by Microsoft, you're not added as an MVP. There are huge benefits to being involved in the community and giving back and having that low level of of impact and participation in the community it's going to benefit your career yeah that's the thing because uh, it's all about learning and sharing so well uh, you know from, from the community uh, you get to learn a lot of things which you can apply in your day-to-day day-to-day uh, -day work to solve problems and uh, uh, you know once even if you discover some of the new problems and discover solutions for those just share it back with the community. So uh, the, the feeling of satisfaction that you get when, when you do that, learn and share, that is, yep. uh, that's just really great. You know, I have to say that, uh, so two of my uh, four kids followed kind of STEM paths. And right. uh, in high school, all four of my kids, I tried to convince them, like, if you start blogging about your educational path, as you're learning yeah. things, I said, just just one article a week, one blog post a week on what you're learning and the subject matter of your major, you know, I, it would benefit your career. I said, you will years from now, look back at those. If you're doing it a week, that's 52 blog posts in a year over years as yeah. you're learning, uh, you know, in that, in the area of study, like my, um, my middle son is, uh, is finishing up his degree in atmospheric sciences is his undergraduate. And he'll go on to grad school and likely a PhD and kind of go down that path. And I keep harassing him. He's done a few, but I keep, I was like, be consistent. Talk about, he's like, I don't know what to go and write about. I said, talk about your learning, what you learned in your classes, the experiments that you've done, the projects at his internship, write about that stuff. I said, even if you don't have the readership now, Think about that on your resume. If you can point back to 50 or 100 you know, uh, uh, blog posts, articles that you've written on the subject matter, how far ahead you will be of the co your competition of other graduates your age. Yeah, true, true. That's what, because uh, it's like, uh, it's, it's, yeah, you keep all your learnings and then one day they will help you one or the other way. So right. yes, well, then that's. That, that's something where I go, and so I use OneNote as my repository for all my content. And when I'm going and researching on the topic, one thing that, uh, one benefit of writing so much uh, is that I will go and do a search within my OneNote and find research that I did, articles that I wrote um, years in the past that I can leverage for that research. Like, oh, you know what, I've written on this, or I had, even if it was never published, I'll capture notes 
put my thoughts around it with links to the talk that I saw or the article that I read. And I'll keep that as a repository and I'll leverage my own past thoughts that I had long forgotten on that topic and then kind of continue that. I might do a blog post, finish a blog post that I started two years ago um, because the technology has progressed and I have more to say on that topic today. Yes, yeah, that's right. So blogging is always good or even just uh, like you said, keeping notes, uh, you know, yeah. they'll, uh, they'll just help you in one or the other way. For sure. What's your primary contribution? Do you are do you prefer blogging? Are you more a video person, or kind of what's your style? Um, uh, so it, it's a mix, I would say. So mainly blogging, though. So I write blogs uh, on the platform called Medium. Uh, yep. uh, so I write uh, blogs related to uh, Sh SharePoint and uh, Azure and a bit of Power Platform. Uh, on the on the other side, you know, I, I try to participate in a lot of PNP community calls, uh, and those calls get recorded, and uh, uh, you know, uh, they come out as uh, uh, on YouTube yep. as, as short calls. So, yeah, but I, I don't have a like a personal video channel or or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's always yeah. something to aspire to, or yeah. or, or avoid. We depending on your <laughs> perspective on that. Well, Anoop, we really appreciate you know the take of the time getting to know you and and uh, for folks that want to find out more about you or follow you, so where where can they find you? Uh, yeah, so I'm on Twitter uh, under the account, uh, oh, sorry, under the username Anoop Tells. Uh, I write blogs, like I said, on Medium, uh, and the username there is there is Anoop T, uh, and I'm on LinkedIn as well uh, um, with my full name Anoop Tati. Yeah, and of course, uh, we'll and... have I'll have a blog post with all the links. So anybody, what if you're listening to this via the podcast, then you'll be able to go to BuckleyPlanet.com, and I'll have uh, an article with all the links to all of his social and his blog and everything there, and so you can find him that way as well. So oh, I yeah. really appreciate the time today. Yeah, thank you very much, Christian, for this opportunity. Thanks a lot. Great. Okay.